Welcome back, everyone. As we all know, climate crisis is a global problem that requires global action. But unfortunately, a majority of the global population is left on the margin or even completely cut out of the conversation. This lack of diversity in sectors such as energy and mobility in not bringing in enough voices to really foster new kinds of innovation and ideas is really a problem. And today, governments and companies have a responsibility to foster inclusion and diversity, to make sure that the transition is really fair, global, and rapid, and to bring more voices to the table. So in this next keynote, exactly this issue is going to be addressed. What are the key points for leveraging, initiating change in bringing more inclusion and diversity to these sectors? This is going to be addressed by Martha Jimeno. She is the head of diversity and inclusion at Siemens Gamesa, and here today to share her views with us on what can help accelerate innovation in terms of bringing more inclusion and diversity. So a warm welcome to you, Martha Jimeno, with your talk, Inclusive Energy Transition, when and diversity fosters innovation. Over to you. Thank you so much. Um, it is a pleasure for me to be here today, uh, sharing with you some ideas about inclusive energy transition. Uh, of course, despite the challenges emerging from uh, the COVID crisis, the fundamentals of renewable energy expansion have not changed. It is expected that renewables will become the largest source of electricity generation worldwide in 2025. As the energy sectors, sector moves toward an innovative and prosperous future, the commitment to diversity and inclusion is imperative. I am going to start with a brief introduction of Siemens Camesa Renewable Energy. Then I will follow with some insights about the rationale behind inclusive energy transition. And I will finalize with some initiatives that have been proved and successful uh, to advance inclusion and diversity in the energy sector before going to the round of, of questions. Um, so if maybe we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. And to the next slide. Well, um, with more than 35 years of experience in the wind power business, now Siemens Gamesa has a leading position in wind energy solutions and services. The company was founded in 2017 when Siemens Wind Power and Gamesa merged their wind power businesses. Siemens Energy has uh, owns the 67% the of the resulting company. The United Company is based in Zamudio, Spain, and trades on the Spanish stock market. Next slide, please. Siemens Gamesa operates with a flexible business model through three principal business units. Wind turbines with the business units of onshore and offshore, which covers the design, development, manufacturing, and installation of wind turbines, and services business unit. In a few regions, the company is also engaged in project development. We have installed more than 107 gigawatts in more than 70 countries, and Siemens Gamesa has manufacturing plants in Europe, Morocco, United States, Brazil, India, and China, and around 40 sales offices. If we move to the next slide, please. The energy sector remains one of the least gender and ethnic diverse sector, uh, sectors, and as we can see in, in the picture here, Siemens Camesa is not an exception. This is our leadership team, where only uh, one woman is, is represented, Beatriz Puente as a CFO. If we move to the next slide, please. Um, at the end of September, the company has around 26,000 employees. Women account for the 19% of the workforce, 13% in senior management positions. 
By regions, women account for the 21% in Europe, Middle East, and Africa, 19% in the Americas, and 13% in Asia and Australia. If we consider STEAM job families, 23% uh, of the company's IT job family, information and technology, are women and 12% um, of women in the company's um, engineering job family. Siemens Gamesa has 108 nationalities, 24 of those are represented in senior management positions. Next slide, please. And next slide. Thank you. Today, today's most difficult challenge came from a diverse interconnected world. Therefore, a diverse group of professionals have the best chance of responding to such challenges. As the clean energy sector continues to grow and evolve, competitiveness relies on the ability to attract and retain diverse, a diverse pool of talent capable of bringing fresh perspectives. Many countries have recognized the importance of harnessing all talent and closing the gaps, noting that greater diversity and equity brings economic and social benefits to all. Since women tend to be more affected by climate change in large parts of the world, women have developed strong skills and knowledge related to natural resource management. Furthermore, Supporting women and diversity in general leads to more innovation. Inclusive teams think less homogeneously, which allows them to come up with innovative ideas and bring diverse solutions to diverse problems. Women are key agents of change as consumers, producers, innovators and decision makers across the energy sector. We can only reach our full potential if we use all of our talent and diversity. Diverse teams produce better results. Innovation happens when people from different backgrounds and perspectives blend together. And finally, with the demographic challenges ahead of us, we cannot afford to leave any potential behind. Next slide, please. Clean energy has a diversity problem. The energy sector is dominated by white men and thus remains one of the most gender and racial ethnic imbalance sectors. And closing this gap will be vital to drive innovative and inclusive solutions. Given the incredible job growth of the energy sector over the past decade, this lack of diversity threatens to cause underrepresented groups to miss out on one of the world's great economic expansions. The evidence shows the immense benefits of the inclusion of women, people of diverse ethnicities and gender identities. Despite these barriers to the employment advancing and retention still persist. Women account for the 32% of the energy sector, while racial and ethnic minorities account for the 22%, with Black and Latin individuals underrepresented compared to population. While women make up 39% of roles at the entry level, they represent just 26% of all executive leaders. However, representation of racial and ethnic minorities remains relatively steady from entry to executive levels. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you. Companies that fail to take inclusion and diversity issues seriously cannot fully understand the forces shaping their business, the, common, the economy and the world. Inclusion and diversity are therefore not just value-based focus, but instead a meaningful investment consideration. Cultivating an inclusive culture free of harassment and unlawful discrimination, where everyone feels respected and valued, an inclusive leadership team 
that drives the cultural change and provides all employees with opportunities to grow and advance on equal terms and for company, and company policies and practices that enable all individuals to benefit from a healthy work-life balance are key for improving inclusion in energy. Organizations must enact solutions to build more equitable workplaces in which women and other underrepresented groups feel supported and valued and are able to not only remain but advance in the workplace. Inaction could erode these underrepresented groups, financial security and cost money in lost economic growth. Closing the gap is not only a moral and social imperative, but makes good sense for business and the worldwide economy in general. And now I think that we can go to the round of the questions. Thank you so much for that Wonderful keynote, Marta, and really underlining these super important topics. Whilst we do have a live audience watching, and I I'm believe they are. I cannot hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll try again, and maybe you can hear me now. Anyway, thank you so much for that wonderful keynote, Martha, and outlining these really important topics that you spoke about now. We do have a live audience, and I do believe that they are using the chat to talk um, lively throughout this event. However, we do not have the possibility to relay the questions to you live on stage here. Um, Maybe if you want, I can just come in by asking if you can give a little bit additional advice. You know, we have many different kinds of stakeholders listening to us. So from big corporates to public sector to smaller startups. And, and I was wondering, maybe you can help just give a few more words of advice if different sizes of companies or different kinds of public sector stakeholders are listening. What are good starting steps for opening up for more team diversity, especially if you do not have a lot of resources and you think this is going like, to tap into some of the constraints you already are experiencing? OK, well, I was, I, I'm not sure if I, I heard the, the beginning of the question because I had some um, uh, connection problems with the, I, I couldn't hear at the beginning. But I think that you are asking me about uh, the, starting, um, the starting steps for building a more inclusive um, company. They say, especially for those that uh, have limited resources. Is that the question? Yes, thank you. <laughs> OK, good, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, well, uh, actually, um, I would say that um, diversity is, is, is about representation. Uh, so I would definitely start with building or trying to build a more inclusive culture. Um, here, um, uh, leaders, the leadership team play, um, plays a key role driving the um, culture, the inclusive culture the, com the company um, needs to, to start a diversity, inclusion, and equal opportunities journey. So I would definitely start with um, the buy-in of the leadership team, uh, making them aware how important it is to um, take or to, to, to bring diversity and inclusion at the top of the business agenda. Uh, for a more uh, sustainable strategy in all companies, definitely diversity and inclusion um, topics um, must be on the table. So I would say that the first step would definitely be to, to have the buy-in of the, of the leadership team. And what if there are people who are working in organizations who are thinking, why is my leadership team so incredibly change resistant? What are good examples that I can bring forth to let them know that this is something that is going to be in the long term also profitable for their business? Yes, of course. Well, I think, uh, first of all, it's, it's a neutral um, it's, it's neutral, natural for human beings to, to have some resistance to, to the change. Um, uh, especially, I would say, when we start something which is a little bit, um, let's say, not so business focused, like 
can be uh, diversity and, and inclusion. Of course, um, I, there is extensive, uh, extensive reports and investigations of how diversity and inclusion bring uh, more um, economic uh, results um, and, and income to the companies. Um, so <clears throat> for companies like, like, like mine, for example, Siemens Camesa, which is a, a very engineering company, um, being able to bring numbers uh, a, a on the table would definitely work. Because at the end, um, you know, um, we are, we all want uh, profitable companies. So um, there is there is extensive. I was saying before there is extensive research and investigations, and there are a lot of numbers on how diversity can bring more more resource, more innovation to the company. Great, thank you. Maybe just as a final question. We previously had a discussion that focused on the intersection of the importance of education, entrepreneurship, and climate change. And I think this is also true for the topic you spoke about, diversion and inclusivity. We must start building a mindset for that sort of from an early age and to see how education comes into building future leaders that understand these topics. Maybe a few last words of advice on how education, and, and w at what stages maybe also education matters for inclusion and diversity. University. Yeah, of course. Uh, there's no no doubt about the, the the interdependency of education and 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 a more sustainable and inclusive energy transition. And it's not only about bringing education to the new uh, generations of the importance of diversity and inclusion. It's also that um, for companies, especially for our, for our sector, and in energy sector, STEAM, um, a STEAM career is, in, is very important. And, and, and the, the, the numbers uh, shows that still uh, we are not, let's say, so attractive for women into the STEAM careers. Um, so, for example, in the company, we have uh, several programs where we go to the schools, at uh, universities, and from, from we try to, to, with games and different resources, we try to, to make a STEAM career uh, more attractive to girls, to women, and, and and this is, is going to be really important for, for the future of, of our energy sector. Absolutely, and I think it's exciting to see so many different kind of initiatives coming forth to see how can we open the door and make this kind of yeah, STEM education more accessible for women and girls, and it's great to see really market leaders such as yourself paving the way for others to follow as well. So thank you so much, Martha, for being here today with us and for sharing your thoughts. It was great to have you. Thank you, my pleasure. We're going to take another very short break now, just a few minutes. And after that break, we're going to be ready to share with you the pitches of the finalists of the category four and five. So we very much look forward for you to tune in again in a couple of minutes and welcome you back for the pitches. See you then. <laughs> 